Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Hello, everybody. How are you doing? I'm here with my partner, John Coleman, and our favorite philosopher, Bill Jordan. <laughs> it's only because you never knew Plato ah. and Socrates and all those guys. Well, actually, That's why I, I, actually, I knew Socrates. <laughs> yeah, they named you know they speaking of famous philosophers they named that that uh, clay after him, after Plato. Play, play doh. Yes, uh, play -Doh? Oh, that, no. that's a good one. That's a good one. Poorly you know, done. Okay. Even at the speaking of baby boomers, I mean, even at the the mention of the name of Plato, can you not smell it? You can just. <laughs> Wait, I can it, it makes me want to. Yeah, it makes me want to take some of it and copy it. Wait a minute, are you saying wake up and smell the Plato? What, what, are we going to talk about Plato today? No, it, it, it's Labor Day, guys. Oh well, it's oh. Labor Day week, you know. Yeah. And and speaking of philosophers and baby boomers, uh, Labor Day just doesn't seem to be the same as a, a, an adult that it did when I was a kid. So what's the real meaning of Labor Day? I'm not sure it's about labor anymore. It it means, what, the end of summer? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it, it, you know, it was, I think, a, a nod to union workers, was it not originally, Labor Day? And it was, you know, to, to acknowledge and recognize the, the hard labor in America. Yes. Uh, and yes. now... Yeah. Now it's uh, it's you know save fifteen percent on a shirt, and um, so you can spend your hard-earned money on something. But I mean, for me, it's a sort of a it's a mile marker along the way. You know, we start off with January one, and I think there's a natural inclination for a lot of people. Okay, it's a new year, a new beginning, and then I break up my year. Then I look at Memorial Day, and that's another kind of a reset for the year. How I'm doing. And then Labor Day is my next one, going into my, what I call, the, or consider the third act of the year. And what are the goals and challenges I've laid out for myself for this year that maybe I've been struggling with or la you know, la lagged on? And I can still finish. I've got the choice of finishing my year strongly. So I use Labor Day as just kind of another little reset. And where am I? Where do I want to be? Yeah, I think, I think you're right that... Um... Basically, many of these uh, holidays that we have uh, nationally were probably politically driven in the first place, and uh, it created three-day weekends, so it, uh, it provided some extra time off for families to get together. But uh, obviously, it was a play to organize labor uh, and to rec recognize them for political purposes, and, right. but, but they've, it's probably long since outlived its original purpose, and it's just another three-day weekend. Um, well, for for me, when I was a kid, uh, Labor Day was uh, the introduction of the new automobile models, ah, right? right. See the Chevrolet in your USA, whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. and, and, and then later, new TV shows. The new TV season ah. started at Labor Day or pretty close to it. And of course, now there is no TV season. Everything is streaming 24 hours a day and um, and don't we forget, don't know what TV it, it is it anymore. It was the beginning of a school, a new school year, shortly after Labor Day, is when we went back to school. Right, but right. That, now they have uh, they have the school year round in places. Yeah. So, yeah. So, so is Labor Day really about labor? Then, I mean, what's left? <laughs> <laughs> well, as my as my dad used to tell me, whenever he'd drive by a mall, like on a Tuesday. And the parking lot would be full. This was way back in the '80s, you know, in '90s. He said nobody works anymore. Yeah, you know, all the the malls are full, the golf courses are full. Nobody works, and of course, we know that that's changed. And of course, COVID, a lot of people working from home and and offsite now. So uh, I, I think obviously people are are still working. I just don't know if it is, Labor Day itself is given. I don't know, the proper recognition. I, I don't know whether you say that or not, but I think it's looked at more as a, yeah, it's a long weekend. If you if you do have to go into a job, it's a it's a three-day weekend. And then, like I said, there's sales. And you mentioned organized labor. 
I worked in radio broadcasting for 40 years, and I can assure you that was disorganized labor. So there needs to be, <laughs> there needs to be a, some sort of holiday for disorganized labor. Well, I think, I think that you actually uh, uh, have captured the spirit of many of these uh, long weekends, but particularly Labor Day because of when it does come, sort of like beginning the third part of a year. Uh, it really what, does. What are the kind of things that you generally uh, uh, look to on Labor Day as to things that you might you know, uh, uh, reflect on and, and uh, uh, think about changing? What do I look at? Yeah. Uh, well, in my part of my embrace the boom thing, I talk about, you know, we I, I try to see my my life as, a, you know, as a table. I got four legs. I've got physical, mental, spiritual and emotional. And I try to look at all those and, and periodically through the year and, it, it, you know, the little milestones, like I say, Labor Day and Memorial Day, New Year's, you know, New Year's Day. I look at that and see, you know, if I'm out of whack with something, I like to be in whack. I find most people are happiest when they are in whack. If your thoughts and your actions are in alignment, then you're in whack. You're not out of whack. So, yeah, physically, am I losing weight like I wanted to? Am I working out? You know, I don't. I've, I don't go to a gym. I've got my home set up here, and, and I'm not a. You know, I'm not a, a fiend about it. I just try to maintain a level of of some strength and some physicality, and I'm working a little more on stretching and stuff like that. You know, again, as I've talked about before, it's part of how you know you're a boomer is, uh, you know, when you hurt yourself in your sleep that first time, you know, now I can talk to you about maybe you're getting a little older, you know, so, uh, but, but I have my readings every morning. I try to anchor myself emotionally and uh, mentally, spiritually, and just reset on all those things. Just where am I and where am I headed? So far, I think I'm doing okay this year. Well, for this Labor Day, I think, and, and thanks to you, Bill, uh, for, for uh, opening us up to this, uh, we should use this moment and everybody out in the audience should use this uh, moment to rededicate themselves to being in whack and uh, maybe use us as symbols of see no whack, speak no whack, hear no whack. Uh, so thank you, Bill. <laughs> I didn't know it was going to go there, but sure, whatever floats your boat, flex yeah. your switch. Well, I think what floats my boat is getting up in the morning and embracing the boom. Oh, you know what? If you wake up, that's a gift right there. So that's the first thing. Attitude of gratitude is my number one practice of embracing the boom. And it's, it's really a practice that we all should have, regardless of your age or where you are in your life. But for baby boomers, especially, and that's why the embrace the boom thing I started, live your life, forget your age, and embrace the boom. And, and as a final thought, I wish everybody watching who's a baby boomer to be in whack. Always strive to be in whack. I, yeah. I that that should go like get chiseled in stone somewhere. So who's Zeppo? Who's Harpo? And who's uh, <laughs> the Whack Brothers? Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, thank you for joining us. Thank you. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.